Hello and welcome to The Bike Show, a weekly programme where we try, occasionally even successfully, to keep you up to date with what's happening in the world of motorcycling. The international biking news has kicked off big time in the couple of weeks since we last reported, so we've got loads of interesting stuff to cover there. But first we're going to hand over to Bill, who has been spending some quality time with a new GT model. Oh. And before I get deluged by more complaints than usual about the onboard sound quality, Bill and camera woman had a dead cat that wasn't quite dead apparently, and it escaped. So there's some um, extra specially authentic wind noises in this test. In 2015, Yamaha took their MT-09, lobbed a fairing on it and called it a tracer. Now, six years have gone and various versions of it appeared through that six years, including the GT. But now we're in 2021 and I think it's about time for a brand new version. And this is it. The 2021 Tracer 9 GT. And according to Yamaha, it is all new from one end to the other. Well, it certainly looks better with this new fairing holding a pair of evil eyes and LED cornering lights. All well and good. And if you also look, the new tank from the MT-09 blends beautifully through the lines of the new Tracer. So it certainly looks better, that's for sure. It's not just about the bodywork though. Oh no, it has a brand new chassis from the new MT-09, which means a much stiffer frame. Yeah, yeah, that feels that way. The swing arm is now 60 millimeters longer than the previous Tracer. And because of the new frame, the engine has been brought back five degrees to improve the center of gravity. This new chassis has improved the handling a lot, a very lot, especially with its new fancy KYB electronic suspension. It controls rebound and damping at the front end and damping only at the rear. It's certainly added a lot more sport into a sport tourer, even though it weighs. 13 love it. It's not just about handling and chassis updates though, because the CP3 engine has had a severe update. It's gone from 847 to 890 cc, making, wait for it, four more horsepower and 7% more torque, or Put it simply, it now has 117 horsepower and 93 newton meters. However, that's only half the story because it has two new TFT three and a half inch screens. Why are they still measured in Imperial when everything's metric? Anyway, so you can throw that onto there and this onto there. But in here, I can't even remember what it does. We have traction control, slip control, IMU, in internal measurement unit like the R1, which sensors lean angles and stuff, heated grips. Guess how many settings? Not one, not two, not 10. 10 positions of heated grips. Okay. Cruise control, did I mention cruise control? Well, it's got that as well. And a five-way adjustable screen. All in all, this thing is absolutely stuffed with electronics. So much so, in fact, I forgot, but one thing you can do if you bring that camera in here, which is quite interesting, on this screen, which seems a bit daft, we can speed this up a bit. Go there, there, okay, one, there, there. Sorry, bear with, it is quite funny, it's worth the wait, and bear with, there. Six fuel gauges. <laughs> well, there's no excuse for running out of fuel, is there? Unless you're uh, riddled with illegal substances, shall we say. Quite simply, 
This Tracer 9 GT is now super. Without doubt, the sporting sport tour Yamaha have ever made. I love a lot about it. Everything works. And the quick shifter. Absolutely fabulous at the top end of the RPM range. No doubt though, it can be a little bit sticky. Now what is a bit sticky is maybe the price. It is 239995. A little bit expensive, but look at the amount of modern technology you've got. Will it take on the might of BMW F900XR? Triumph have a 900 GT and I suppose, thank you very much. And perhaps we can have a 890 KTM Adventure in there as well, all around the similar sort of price. So will it sell? Only time will tell. Yeah, having talked with Bill after his ride and having ridden the MT-09 naked myself, I'm going to say the F900XR simply can't compete in the chassis or engine department, especially the engine. The Yamaha's triple is one of the most enjoyable middleweight motors on the market at the moment, and it's pumping out 12 horsepower more than the Beamer. The Triumph 850 Sport is in theory a closer match, obviously using a similar triple cylinder engine, which for some reason is called the 850, even though we're looking at the same 888cc capacity as the models that are called 900. It may be set apart in this way because it's a more budget option than the adventure versions, and it makes 84 horsepower rather than the 94 of the 900s. It is, however, much cheaper in Europe than the Yamaha and would, if Triumph brought it into the country, which it seems they don't, retail for around 190,000 Rand. Bill also mentioned the 890 Adventure from KTM and in the non-R version, it's a viable comparison, particularly here in Europe where the vast majority of these adventure bikes are used as tourers and general all-rounders. The Tracer, though, is a dedicated road-only model, so a fairer comparison would be with a model KTM hasn't yet released. But rumours, and logic, suggests it will probably, maybe, arrive in time for sale next year. We're talking about an 890 Duke GT to go with the 890 Duke R. Much like the 1290 Super Duke GT sits alongside the naked Super Duke R. Staying with the European competition, let's not forget Ducati's Multistrada 950, which does the same job as the Yamaha for 10,000 Rand less. It too has a characterful engine in the shape of a V-twin that is only shy of the Tracer GTs by four horsepower, though it can muster four newton meters more torque, and that arguably is a more important statistic for the touring side of the sport touring equation. And of course, it's red and Italian and that for many is understandably a feature that is actually worth paying a bit extra for. Rivals from fellow Japanese manufacturers are also on the cards with a model featuring the engine from Honda's Africa Twin expected to appear in a touring road adventure XR GT style setup next year. It may be an 1100 but the horsepower will be less than the Yamaha and the torque greater and pricing will probably be a shade more affordable. Kawasaki's obvious rival is the Versus 1000 but that has ceased production so I'm told but only because probably there's an updated version just around the corner. It has always offered a lot of engine and in fact a lot of bike for the money and we'd expect it to continue in that vein with some more sophisticated electronics and a price to probably be close to the Yamahas. Having said all that, we can't forget the very lovely, extremely capable Ninja 1000 SX that Kawasaki has had on its books for the last decade. We've always been a fan of this sport tourer and with 142 horsepower, it's a tourer with a genuine sporting side and a not inconsiderable 25 horsepower advantage over the Yamaha. If it was for sale in South Africa, which it doesn't appear that it is anymore, then you'd expect to pay about the same money for it as the Tracer GT. Yamaha is probably 
quite grateful that the SX is no longer a competitor it has to worry about, at least in South Africa. Suzuki has potentially the greatest threat to sales of the Tracer GT in the shape of the just announced GSX S1000 GT. This comes hot on the heels of the naked GSX S1000 that debuted earlier this year and that Unfortunately, we haven't yet ridden, but given we raced one in the South African Endurance Series a couple of years back, it's a model we've already got a very soft spot for. Talking with colleagues from overseas, we believe it is now significantly more refined, which bodes well for this new GT version. If you like horsepower with your GT, then having an extra 35 horses over the Tracer will probably appeal, and the fact that it is likely to retail for the same price, or even a bit cheaper, will probably appeal even more. It's not as good looking as the Yamaha, but it is at least distinctive, and it will also boast a comparable suite of electronics. It should be in South Africa by early next year, hopefully, providing consumers with a, a difficult choice to make if they happen to be in the market for a sport tour in the sub 250,000 rand bracket. A lot of competition for the Tracer GT then, though plenty of it hasn't arrived yet and that's a major plus for the Yamaha. But even when all the rival models have arrived, I wouldn't think about ignoring it if I was in the market for a sport tourer. An entertaining, characterful engine that is quite possibly the most entertaining of the lot if you factor in the way it delivers its power and the noise it makes while doing it. It looks fantastic, to us at least, it has the expected Yamaha build quality and in terms of comfort and electronics it's at or very near the top of a very talented field of bikes. We tested the MT-09 naked a couple of months back and raved about it so perhaps it's no great surprise that we feel very much the same about this Tracer GT. And on that totally unsurprising note, let's go for a short break. <laughs>